In our last episode, we installed the engine bay wire loom. Now that that's in place, I can install the brake fluid reservoir and the clutch master cylinder. And we'll talk about that later. So go brew yourself a cup of joe or pop open a cold one and let's talk shop. Master cylinder reservoir mounting is like so. Phillips screw on the outside into the bracket that wraps around the back and then bolts with more Phillips screws to the, the bottom piece that bolts to the strut tower. That's how that works. Brake fluid reservoir, time to go back on. Comes with a couple of little brackets. This one here bolts to the strut tower and this guy here wraps on the back of the reservoir. And then once this is bolted to the strut tower, then this guy threads on there. Okay, so let's get these puppies put on here. This is a Phil's Rotary brake fluid reservoir. Um, a couple other places sell them too, like Pack Performance, a couple others. One screw's fallen. I'm going to need a magnet for that. I have extra screws, but you know what? I just don't want it rattling around. Get it. Okay. brake fluid reservoir. Okay, so this is the clutch master cylinder from my 76 Mazda RX-3. Here's the replacement coming in from Rock Auto. Now it does have a smaller reservoir um, and the mounting stud is quite a bit shorter. So, I took the old one out and I'm um, gonna get it plated. And uh, you should know that the short threaded side goes into the flange. The longer threaded side is, accepts the nut. I was going to rebuild my old clutch master cylinder. I had a repair kit, but I did find a brand new one. Very reasonably priced, so I bought it. It's made in Japan. Happy about that. So, here we go. Brand new master. Clutch master. Okay, got a brand new washer. New nut. Can't see, my hand's in the way. And I'm gonna go on the inside of the car where the stud pokes through the firewall, get that side started. And on the inside, poking through the firewall is that stud. Get that one started. Different threads, come on, are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding. All right, taking this out. Threads are not, it's not threading right on. Okay, so the threads are boogered. Let's put a die on that, fix it up. I believe this is eight by one, two, five. So let's fix these threads. There we go. You're right at the tip there. It was boogered enough so I couldn't get the nut started. It was actually difficult to get the die started. It's nice and smooth now. Should be good to go. Clutch master installation, take two. With a new washer and nut on the freshly cleaned up threads. No torque spec for this, not that I could find. Just gonna snug it up good. We'll do a, we'll do pedal adjustment later. Pretty much can only fit a spanner in here, so. so snug it up with a spanner. 
We have a more permanent home now and the two car garage is going to become the new shop. So it's time to move out of the leased shop, full shop, empty shop. Again, full shop, empty shop. If you want to see more of our friend, she's at the very end of our episodes, including the last two. This is the bracket that holds the clutch hydraulic line to the firewall and connects the rubber hose from the metal tube to the clutch slave cylinder. And um, it bolts to the firewall with just one with just one flange nut. You can see where there was a flange nut on this side. This side had nothing. And the reason there is still a hole here is there's a nubbin on the firewall. See this little nubbin on the firewall? So this is gonna bolt right here like that. And that little nubbin goes in the second hole. Okay, clutch hydraulic hose bracket ready. Now that I'm ready to put some more lines on this proportioning valve, I've discovered that this this tube is going to the wrong port. So I'm going to fix that right now. And then I've got uh, a couple more that are ready to bolt on here. Clutch master cylinder is in now, so I have a couple of more hydraulic tubings that I'm ready to attach to the firewall. So what I have is the clutch master hydraulic and one of the brake lines that runs across to the other side of the car. So I get to do some more fishing today. These guys are going to fish back behind some of these other uh, tubings. Going fishing. Where's my gone fishing sign? So this guy goes right here. I'm not really going to tighten anything here. I'm just getting it started so it stays. And then, let's see, it's going to kind of get attached with these little clamps and hang out in this vicinity. So that'll set there for now while I do some more fishing with this brake line. Now the brake line's going under here on the other side of this guy. Back behind fuel. It goes to the proportioning valve here. Can I get this started just loosely? There we go. So one of my clamps is going to go right here, and then the other one will sort out this side. Brake on top, clutch on the bottom. And I've fed this other end through the fender well. It's going to end up going through a couple of clamps there. I'll have to dig those out. Don't have them right this second. Now that I'm done with the fishing, this guy can go back here. And there's one last brake line that goes to the proportioning valve, and that's the one that goes through the fender well for the left brakes. So that's what's going to go here. It gets fed into this little notch here, and then it gets uh, tucked back behind the clutch master. Okay, and then I'm going to thread this on into the proportioning valve. Okay, that little project is done. Here's some camera movement across the firewall. So if any of you are piecing together an RX-3, this might be helpful to you. Left-hand drive, of course. Coming up next. So my brake power booster I had rebuilt by Power Brake Exchange of San Jose. I've got a brand new master cylinder. It's a Phil's Rotary master cylinder. Click our icon to subscribe and don't miss out on our upcoming videos. Peace out, brother.